over to Ben Ezra. What a feed to Anthony gets it to go. At the free throw line. Splash. Welcome to the NCSY pregame show, NCSY, best summer ever. Hi everyone, I'm Ari Katz, and joining me is Marv Albert. Sorry, Marv, Marvin Azarek, sorry, I'm used to Marv Albert. <laughs> We're starting off the game, now we have a, a tier one consolation game. Winner will take on um, Ida Crown. And so, Marv, you know, one of the reasons why someone could ask, why is this game important? It's a consolation game, you know, they don't really have as much to play for. And I was just speaking to Coach Gelb, um, from Maimonides, and he was saying that Maimonides has made Tier 3 three times in the past 20 years. If you want to talk about something to play for, how about your pride? This is a historically good Maimonides team that are looking to represent themselves against the Shalhevet team that seems, to be a, that seems to be here every year. These are also some very competitive guys. If you saw the Beth Tefila game versus Ida Crown, nobody was playing lax. You couldn't tell that it was a, that it was a consolation game. What, what do we look forward to for this game? Yeah, well, you have a you have a couple of great matchups on, both on the perimeter, on the perimeter and the interior. Start on the outside, you got Ronan Guerz for the MCATs against Adon Bitron, the Atron for the Firehawks, and then on the in, and then on the inside, you have you have Nate Weinstock for my, for Mimo, and then for Shalhevet, you have Sam Jacobson. All right, amazing. We're now gonna go and run to the broadcast. Back on the broadcast, sorry, a little bit of a delay. We have some um, some referees coming in. Now, thank God they're, they're back in. All right, guys, how does my audio sound? Okay. You good? Yeah. Welcome. For those just joining us, we have a Tier 1 consolation game between the Maimonides Demcats and the Shalhevet Firehawks. If you look now, your starters, um, on your starters now, um, are, are sponsored by Yeshiva University Office of Admissions. As you start your college journey, make sure to make sure you visit us online. Check out all the great events and opportunities we have for YU students. As we see now, Gewertz, Weinstock. Um, also, we have Josh Kanner, um, and then uh, Jonathan Greenberg and Avi Schwartz. And then who do you got for uh, for Shalhevet right now on the court? As the ball goes out of bounds. It looks like we have Zayn Mendelson, Aiden Bitron, Jakob Lieberman, Sam Jacobson, and Jacob Kilberg. And now here comes Shalhevet in their opening offensive possession. And good play inside for Jacobson. Sophomore, much improved player. As he gets the layup early. Shalhevet coming out in a full court press. Weinstock throws it. Back to Gortz. Gortz inside, floater. Missed it, here comes Bitron. Bitron runs this team. Has good hands right there by Kanner. Now Weinstock coming on the other end. Bitron comes away with the steal. Yes, they have numbers now. Inside, good play as Bitron rolls it in. Avoided the outstretched hand of Jonathan Greenberg there. 
Yeah, it's a beautiful play by Bitron the Atron. Almost another steal there from Bitron. But Kanner comes up and cans the jumper. Here it is, Clay Lieberman on the defense Libby. And right now, this is sort of what we're seeing. What we're seeing here from our monitors, they're coming out. In the it is Gewurz, thought about the pull-up, goes to the line stop. Weinstock pushed out of the paint, settles for the jumper. Missed it, rebound by Bichon. There's Lieberman, the sophomore, pulls up. This is the jumper. Out of bounds, gonna stay with Shaw Heaven in the black. Uh, the rumor is that they're wearing black. This is gonna be my body to the funeral. My is gonna have something to say about that. Here's Mendelssohn throwing it in. Sorry, not Mendelssohn. As Gewurz now coming down. Gewurz goes it to Schwartz. Weinstock inside again, can't get inside the paint. Good interior defense there by Shalhevit as Gewurz jumps back to steal it. Interception by Renan Gewurz. Gewurz misses the jumper, rebound Tanner as he's fouled over. Good now. Good. Can you hear me now, Mark? Oh, okay, good. Don't know what is going on. Don't, oh, okay. Don't know what is going on this Sorry morning. Sorry for those at home, a little bit of technical difficulties. It's early morning stuff. All right, no problem. And here it is, Greenberg misses the shot. Now coming the other end, here's Lieberman. Lieberman pushing in transition. Lieberman inside. Ooh. Man hit the floor and he hit the three. Again, man, he's coming out on the press. I love the aggressive, I love the aggressive approach. It's a, it's a habit, rather. I love the aggressive approach that they got. And it, it's, it's kind of what, it's kind of what Maggie did to Mimo on Friday. And it worked. I mean, they, they got into a little bit of a track meet. And with the early lead, why not try it? Uh, misses the mid-range jumper. Now Lieberman coming down. Bitron leaking out in transition. Gewurz caught up with him and fouled him. You know, if there's one player on the court that'd be able to catch up with Bitron in the open court, it'd be Renan Gewurz. Like we said in the pregame pre -game show, really looking forward to that matchup. Very similar size. They also uh, play, play very similarly, uh, Bitron and Gewurz. Both seniors have played a lot these past couple years. So it's going to be a very, very interesting matchup. Yeah, uh, yeah, he talked about it at the top of the show. These guys are playing for a lot of pride, trying to go out on a high note with their high school careers. So. And now subbing into the game is Ben Ben Wintner. A tall junior, looks like he's going to be a featured player on next year's team. As Bitron cans the second free throw, early 10-2 lead for Shalheve, 11-2, sorry. Now that they added the free th the point for the free throw. You're gonna call in a sub now. Sub is Yosef Khain, senior for this MIMO team. Coach Gelb said they're gonna make sure they get everyone in. We asked him who's gonna be playing tonight. He said everyone. Yeah, as they should. Everyone should be given an opportunity. Talked to Gelb before the tournament. He said everyone has a role in this team. Uh, didn't really sing didn't, didn't single out anyone as an X Factor. He said you don't have one. Everyone has a role. Gewurz, mid-range okay. jumper. Missed it, and Bitron tipped the rebound. Here's Lieberman. Mendelssohn inside. Steps back, but misses the shot. The ball bounces and is finally corralled by Hain. Here's Gewurz looking up in transition. Throws oh. it, but too tall for Weinstock. You know, it's very hard to do that, but uh, they weren't able to connect there. It's pretty tough, but... One stock will, sh will shake it off and then get a stock up in, in the next stop. Next opportunity you get. Yeah. 
All right. Nope. Yeah, now like now it looks like there's a there's a timeout here. The NCSY Summer is the premier summer trip provider for Jewish teens across the world. With over 20 plus programs spanning the US, Israel, and Europe, NCSY Summer can find something to you. Visit summer.ncsy.org. And reminder for everyone to stay tuned for the Camp Step It Up halftime show. Looking forward to that. Curious to see now what adjustments both of these, both of these teams have now felt each other out over the first few minutes of this game. <coughs> you want to talk about an early start? Well, hopefully both of them have, 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 have come out of their slumber and now both teams are rid of the ball. But obviously, shall have it. That has got the early lead. That's important in these early games. They set the tone. See if they extend it. Or Here's Lieberman, the sophomore. He's had big minutes so far this tournament and really the whole year. The coach has a lot of trust in him as Bitron pulls up, misses, rebound, strong rebound there by Weinstock. Now here's Gewertz in the half court offense. Finds Weinstock going inside, misses it too strong. Banks puts it up and puts it in. Nice bank there from Banks, right on cue. He's on the wing, Lieberman thought about the shot. Puts it back to Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn back to Bitron. Bitron's been a four year player for this team. He swings it to Mendelssohn. Back out to the corner. Thought about the three. Back to Bitron, he releases it. But missed it. For offensive rebound though. Yeah, very, very different uh, defensive schemes for these two teams. Here's Mendelssohn, Bitron coming off the screen, but they're gonna call a moving screen there. Now that's one of the things Coach Gelb said. He said that they love to create offense for Bitron, either by having him as a screener and then having him pop out or having a screener and then, and then him popping out. Um, but he said one, in order, we, have to, we have to beat those, uh, those plays if we wanna be able to beat this team. And uh, you saw that's definitely one way to do it, to try to fight through the screen, to force the refs to make a difficult call. Here's Banks again, shall have it playing very active on, on defense. You know, they, they're not having the highest scoring game, but it's just been shutting down Mimo so far. Very yeah, that's, that, that, that's, that, that's what Coleman wants though. Uh, Coleman was preaching that in the, the talk to him in the, in shall have it, uh, Sarachek opener against DRS, and he just talked about how he knew he, yeah, he knew that he knew the boys would come out sloppy offensively, but he was even more surprised to see a sloppy defensive performance in the first half. Yeah. Before they came back and won it, before before losing to TABC in a heartbreaker in overtime on Friday. All right, now they're going to be inbounding, and you see now full press. You have four people above half court for Shalhevet, who's been working so far. Here's Weinstock now in the corner. Now you're li listening to the sounds of the game here. There's obviously not that big of a crowd here. These guys are both, this is an atmosphere similar to just two teams playing on the park and enjoying themselves. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that plays into the hands of Michelle Hevitt. Uh, Coleman talked about it the other day. He said, these guys struggle in an intense environment. Well, this is a wide open one today. And you're already seeing into the first quarter here that these guys are playing loose and, pr and free. Weinstock misfired on the pass. Now coming the other way in transition. The three now misses it off the back of the rim. Sorry, off the backboard. Pass now to Greenberg. Greenberg back out to Schwartz. Schwartz releases on the three and misses it. Now here coming the other end. It's Jacob Kilberg. Kilberg throws it back to Ascari. Now the triple. Offline, the rebound there by Weinstock. We've seen Shalhevet lean on their bench a lot more this game than they normally would. Maybe some of it being that it could be the, the last game, one of the last games for these teams. A lot of seniors, you want to make sure that they're able to play. And play in what could be one of their last games, not only of Shalhevet, but one of their last games of their basketball career. Here it is, loses it. 
Now coming the other way is Ascari. Sorry, Kilberg. Kilberg inside the foul. Wasn't able to get it to roll in. Too like that play, but though by Kilberg the iceberg. Uh, he's able to get inside, create the contact. Doesn't go, but gets an opportunity to go to the line. That's what you want to see from Limo. Down right. Down right now. He's had a, he's had a tough first quarter. But see if you can slow the time down a little bit. Get yourself some momentum going into the second half. Kilberg hits the first free throw. Come to Como Pizza for some great pizza, pasta, salads, and even awesome breakfast options. We'll be streaming the games in the store, making it a great place to watch the games while you eat. I can tell you, Marv, I was in uh, Como last year after some of the games. That place was popping. You got people, people crowding in there to watch the games. Great food, great time, big screen watching the, watching the games. Um, I also, I believe they, they play the YU games uh, when YU's playing. So always a great, great place to be if you're going to be on the YU campus. Here's Gewurz checking back into the game. A lot of the starters checking in for both teams. And as Schwartz cans the three. Ah, that's a short, that's a short switch right there. I love it. Does my does, does I hold for one here? Do you shall have it, or do you go, or do you are you aggressive? Looks like they're gonna win. You got You got to hold for one. Here. Yep. Here's Kilberg inside, loses the ball. That's gonna be out of bounds. Gonna stay with them now. You have Dweck, the sophomore, inbounding. A lot of sophomores on this team. Dweck, Hirsch, also, of course, Lieberman, starter. Here's Jacobson, again, another sophomore. Here it is, Kilberg inside, puts it off the bank, misses. Jacobson coming down. Put it up. Oh. Couldn't put it up. Great job over there. Great job there by Schwartz coming over. Looks like he's coming up limping a little bit on the play. Now we're going to send it to commercial break. Receive Sarachak news and updates and get the close game alerts. Join our WhatsApp group. The link is in the description of this YouTube video. All Sarachak games which are played at Yeshiva University will be broadcast on the MaxLive.com and MaxLive YouTube channel. Subscribe to MaxLive on YouTube and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single Sarachak broadcast. Yeah, as we start the second quarter here, just a uh, quick correction. I uh, apologize to all the Kilbergs watching. I think I accidentally uh, talked about it being on my mode then. Shall have it. Uh, regardless, that was a great play by by, Kil uh, by Jacob to just get to the rack there and get some opportunities at the charity stripe. See if Shalhev can continue to attack the paint here in this second stint. Here's Kilberg now, double teamed, almost lost his footing. Lieberman now inside, throws it out to Bitron, and Bitron drills the three. You know, he hits contested three, so if you give him, him open three, that's all the daylight he needs. Ah, uh, that's why he's betrayed the atrium. Weinstock throws it out to Gortz. Gortz passes it out to Kanner. Starters back in the game for both teams. Here's Weinstock. You know, Jacobson's done an excellent job pulling him out of the paint, making sure that Weinstock can't dominate inside like he normally does. But now Weinstock's going to go in the paint. Misses the hook, but great shot there. Um, I love that look for him. Here's Kilberg. Resets. Back to Mendelssohn. Dangerous shooter. Misses off the rim. And Schwartz comes down with it. Schwartz in transition deceptively fast. It's Greenberg back to Kanner. Kanner back to Schwartz. Moves his feet very well. Schwartz pulls up. 
and misses it. Jacobson now coming the other end with Bitron. Now look for that. I haven't really seen Jacobson and Bitron playing uh, playing the two-man game as much as they normally do. Uh, no. look, look for that to, to be more on the uptick if they want to create open looks for Jacobson. I also think that could be part of the both teams' defensive game plans. I mean, they, they know those guys are the, are the targets, so they try and do everything they can to take those guys out of their rhythm. Jacobson in the post. Time. Again, great uh, play there, but he took the extra step. I didn't think he needed that. I think no. if he would have jumped up and uh, tried to scoop it under, I think he w that would have worked for him also. But with him, what makes him so dangerous also, great passer out of the post. Um, one, one thing to look for to see. A lot of times, not just doubling him, but he could keep his eyes open and make sure to pass it out. Gowertz open on the perimeter. Couldn't find him. Now Jacobson covers him. Here's Kanner, baseline. They called it, they call it say that he pushed him out, so that's gonna be a foul there. I was gonna say it looked like he stepped out, but they call a foul. Looking for an open man. They find Weinstock, baseline shot. Missed it. Rebound taken by Lieberman. Lieberman now taking in transition. He's going to slow down and find Bitron. Mendelssohn to Lieberman. Lieberman stumbles. Going to give it up. Finds it to Bitron. Mendelssohn now. Yeah, I got to say, I got to say, that's not the first time I've seen players stumble on that side of the court. Uh -huh. And we saw this um, in this gym a month ago with, uh, the, with the Max in the playoffs. There was a, there was a delay because there was a, some moisture on the floor, uh, on, on that side of the floor. Seems to be a little, a little bit has uh, stuck around in spirit in this tournament. Ward puts it in. Marv will put you on the, on the case to investigate that one. <laughs> Here's now Mimo clawing back. Just starting down 11-2 early. Now it's score 69. As here's Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn out to Hirsch. And Mendelssohn gets it back for the three, misses it. Weinstock comes down with it. Gowertz pulls it back. Reset the half-court offense. I'm now just Leaving the wings wide open. And look at that. Look how far. I don't know if this is part of the strategy or if this is Shell Heaven's defense, but look how far um, you see. Uh, you look how, look how far. Yeah. yeah, look how far you see him playing. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're not. They're not playing a. They're not playing a straight up man to man anymore. Yeah. They've sort of switched into a little bit of a zone. These Firehawks and Wait. seems to be working because it's causing some chaos. Wintner comes back in to, to replace some of the size that Mendelssohn was bringing as Schwartz drills the three. What a start to a Schwartz Sunday. That is beautiful. And they're pumped. Here they come. The MCATs prowling their way back. MCATs clawing back. Don't go anywhere. back for behind the scenes pictures and content you won't find anywhere else be sure to follow at max live on instagram and twitter again now x but Ma at max live on instagram and x here's kilberg now inside got canner in the air a couple times on the fake now Whitner back out as dweck finds inside Whitner back to kilberg Betron calling for the ball but Kilberg looking to create his own, but he stepped in and traveled. Yeah, he had options. If he looked, he had he could have he could have found someone on the wing. Again, I think a lot of the size from from uh, Maimonides right now is 
is preventing some of these players for, for seeing seeing the passing lanes. But yeah. Petron is open a lot of times on the opposite side of the court. He has been. Which is not, not, doesn't usually happen, so you got to take advantage of that. Here's Dweck guarding Gortz. They're going to call a moving screen there on Canary. It looks like he, stick, he stuck that yeah, hip out. Of my, one of my most strengths, though, at spring guard entering this tournament is guarding the paint. Because of their size, they do a good job of limiting what you can do inside. Yeah. You shall have it. You gotta adjust to that and sort of play the wings. These guys can hit threes. They're very, they're, they're capable of it. But why not? Why they, not go to it? They don't call them the Firehawks for the reason. They've been on yeah. fire so far yeah. from the three-point line. Dweck finds Jacobson. There goes that good interior defense. Here's Kanner. Now, shall have it going back to their full court press. You know, they went away from it a little bit, but now they're back. Weinstock tries the range, misses it, gets his own rebound, though. That was a good looking jump shot there. As Schwartz now releases it and misses it. Rebound Kanner, taken away there by Beatron. Out of view of the strength there. Good pocket pass to Lieberman and back out to Beatron. I like the pace now here by shall have it as they throw it out to Dweck. Bitron settles into his shot. Good shot there. That's fine. Here's Gowertz inside. Crafty finish. Missed it. Rebound there by Kanner. Kanner back out. Greenberg got him in the air on the fake. Throws it to Gowertz for three. Missed it. Mimo is ready to explode there. They're trying to, t they're trying to make it a one possession game for the first time since early in the first. Lieberman inside. Blocked by Weinstock. Bitron steals the rebound. Tipped up in the air. Wintner gets it back. Wintner turns and puts it in. Yeah, that's great wits from Wintner. Very, very active play there. A lot of changes of possession under that basket. Greenberg thought about the three. As Gortz now fouled there by Dweck. Looks like they wanted to stop the clock. You know, maybe that's, maybe the team was tired or they wanted to make a make a sub as, as Ascari comes into the game. But you talked about a couple, uh, couple minutes ago Trevor going back to that to that press, and I liked it. I, li I like how they're mixing it up a little bit. Right now, right now it looks that uh, looks like Maimonides only has. Oh, sorry. Now uh, Gelb just checked into the game. Number forty-three, Zach Gelb. Of course, uh, son of the coach Ed Gelb. So always you see these coaches' sons, very crafty players, high IQ, and that definitely fits the build for Gelb. Here's Kanner turns around, scoops it. Pretty yep. play there by Kanner. See it here that could open a can of worms for Mimo as they close out the first half. Here's Ascari, finds Wittner inside. Wittner back out to Lieberman. Lieberman, the only starter on the court right now for Shalhevet. Lieberman throws it back out. Dweck tries the triple, misses it. Rebound goes back to Lieberman. Well, I've done a great job today of extending possessions. Seeing it right here, they're wearing down Mimo defen defensively. Ackerman gets the screen, throws it under. Good pass okay. there by Wittner. And now Wittner has another bucket inside. Again, making a lot of use of that big frame. Here's Masagi. Masagi inside. And it rolls off. Masagi hit the three-point jumper in the game against Hafter. Hit a buzzer beater. Yeah, you know, right there from Masagi. Very... It's, uh, very very fun player, plays with a lot of intensity. Yeah. Here's Gortz now, 43 seconds left. You know, make sure to stay tuned for the Camp Step It Up halftime show um, that we will be having. As soon as this clock hits zero, we're gonna have an interview and then the halftime show as Gortz misses the shot. Make sure to stay tuned for that. Is there gonna be a foul now? Is it a over the back? Yes, it's over the back there by Ed Gelb. Sorry, by, by Zach Gelb. Looks like the coach did not go on the court right there. It was, uh, it was Zach Gelb. Here's Lieberman coming now. 28 seconds left. Lieberman now looking to extend the lead. Shot clock turned off. Lieberman, three, nine three, seconds. Yeah. They haven't really passed the three-point line yet, this possession. Lieberman gets it now. Here it is. Schwartz, does he have some magic in him? Throws it to Gowertz. The layup. Yes! 
Gewurz puts it in to beat the buzzer. Cut the lead to six points. Huge shot there by Gewurz. Because now we're going to send it. I don't believe we have an interview. It looks like we're going to send it now to the Step It Up halftime show. No matter how hard we train during the week, no matter how hard we go with basketball, we go on field trips, we go here, we go there, we make sure not to compromise our Jewish identity. At the end of the day, we are Jews and we are Hashem's children and we have to be like that every single day, no matter how busy we are. If you're looking for help on a certain weak point in your religious activities, then you can ask the rabbi. For example, I asked how to lead davening, and now I'm starting to do mincha and shachari, and it's really fun. I don't come to camp just to run three minyanim a day. I come to camp because the kids bring with them an inspiring energy, something that I'm able to draw power from for myself, and ultimately I'm able to share something with them that I love, that I'm passionate about, and having those two things together, it's unstoppable. We're able to both grow in such a way that we leave as different people than when we came. The Shabbos at camp is definitely very special. We started off, there's a couple of Shabbat, singing, dancing, all of that. Um, and then something I personally really enjoy is every Shabbos I go to a learning group with one of the counselors, Noah. While being a great coach, he's also very wise and really knows how to just talk to kids and have a serious conversation with them. That is really special to me because if kids choose not to play basketball and they kind of want to use um, the day to rest, there's still opportunities to um, enhance your Jewish life. No question to us is a bad question. We, we make sure all the kids feel comfortable asking us, even about Al-Nati like a dime in the morning, saying brachot on food, why do you put on shoes a certain way, why do you tie shoes a certain way? And we just want to make sure that we can start somewhere with them and go beyond that. I teach a shir on Shabbat that's usually meant to go 30 to 45 minutes, but ends up being three hours long and me and the kids talk about life, we talk about halacha, pirkei avot, lashon hara, and we cover all bases and it's my most important day of the week. We offer a variety of programming. We have learning groups that appeal to all different age levels, in-text learning, out-of-text learning, mitzvot, philosophy, gemara, chumash, bar mitzvah lessons. We have special programs that go on Rosh Chodesh, Tisha B'Av, Shiva Asr B'Tamuz, even secular holidays like 4th of July. We have all the necessary pieces for kids, regardless of religious background, to live their best Jewish life. And they might even learn a little. My name is Mark Sanford. This is my third time, uh, third summer with Step It Up. First time um, overnight. And throughout the year, I'm a uh, four-time uh, assistant coach, and player development coach, and personnel scout. For me, its existence alone separates itself from the camps that I'm familiar with. The attention to detail, the coaching, and the commitment to developing these young players. What I want to give them is my time. I want to give them uh, an opportunity to ask questions, uh, to have their questions answered. I want them to see or have a glimpse into the dedication and the commitment that is required for results in this sport. If I could have come to step it up as a child, who knows the height to which I could have sent it. And I had great parents, and it's not about that. But it is about um, just certain parts about the sport and life and the bridge that brings them together that I think um, could have been extremely beneficial to me as a young basketball player coming out of Dallas, Texas. My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of a cell. I made my painting from scratch. Like, really, from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. 
My store was practice every night. Cover to every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Okay, are we back, guys? Okay, fine. Looks like, yes, we're back in the game. Um, we're coming now. It was a very, very uh, entertaining first half of basketball for these teams. We saw a lot of people get in um, who, who don't necessarily always play the most minutes for this team. And we saw a little bit of a quiet half, though, surprisingly, from Aiden Bitron. What did he have? Uh, 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 two points early, four points early, and then hit one three. But after that, you know, he was really just quiet um, for for the for the rest of the half. Um, so definitely look for him to get going if Shal um, if Shal Hevet wants to close out this game. And uh, for Maimonides, what did you see from them, Marv, in that first half? Yeah, I, I saw I sort of saw that they there there's definitely some things that Maimo can clean up. I think that the fact that they have the size advantage, they should be able to force Shal Hevet into sort of one and done possessions. They haven't been aggressive enough. Um, on the glass, I think um, offensively they can definitely make Shalhevet work a little bit more um, to get some stops. And I think what they need to do to sort of stop that press is is gain the ha is gain that is gain that area with speed, gain that half court, come over the middle, come over the line with speed as a five man unit. That's how you sort of beat a trap. Come over to the yeah, you gain speed is one, and then you make them spread out, and it takes them out of their structure, and you'll get the looks that they want. And when they've been able to set up the offense, they've had some good opportunities. They just got to do it more often. Yeah, uh, definitely. And uh, we, we just enjoyed our halftime show. The halftime show was brought to you by Camp Step It Up, located in upstate New York, with busing provided to and from camp. Step It Up is the most proven Shomer Shabbos basketball camp in the world, featuring 33 current Sarachek players and over 400 past Sarachek players, as well as YU and Stern College Stars over the past 12 years. There are programs for boys and girls grades 4 to 12, including 1 to 7 week options in both the U.S. and Israel. There are three minyanim per day, learning groups, and a camp rabbi. Past campers include many Yeshiva League MVPs, over 60 college players, and an NBA draft pick. Um, for more information, email office at campstepitup.com. Call 888- 600-0908 or visit time to step it up dot com for those watching at home um, we would love to see if you can uh, try to figure out who is that one NBA draft pick who attended camp step it up for those wondering at home um, for, for all you trivia experts you got an answer to that 
I know. I, I actually I knew it last year. Okay. Last year when we did the games, I had it written down. Cool. But uh, this year I forgot. Okay. Now it's been a it's been a great opportunity to get to run it back with you again, Ari. I'm enjoying this. And for you, Mimo fans, well, we got yeah. you again. It's been a it's been a great time. It seems like it seems like they love sticking us with Mimo again. We're very happy with that, and they also love giving us those these top uh, LA schools. So you know, Mir Hashem next year, we're happy to take happy to take Yula and then uh, Yula Mimo again <laughs> for those watching. We're Valley. Here it is. Weinstock comes out, misses the turnaround jumper. Good shot for him to start though. And here's Lieberman, Mendelssohn thought about the three. Yeah, I like the way Mendelssohn plays. Plays almost like a Sean Marion. You know, like the Matrix puts the, loses team mm -hmm. together. Petron throws it out to Lieberman. Back out, Kilberg. Nope. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think every team that has a lot of great offensive weapons needs a steady and cool hand. I think we saw that a couple weeks ago. And as that, Greenberg uh, hands the shot. Oh. Sorry, that was Schwartz. We saw that a couple weeks ago when the Magna Flappers were here for the Yeshiva League Championship. Phil sure got the MVP of that game. Not because he scored a bunch, but because he was able to steady the tie for the Magan offense. Phil sure I was privileged to actually to meet uh, his mother, and during the um, I was announcing the Frisch uh, when I was when I was a freshman. I was announcing the Frisch Magan the the semifinal game, and um, the she was very proud to show me that the, her son was who was tearing it up on the court. She's like that was my son. A lot of nachas there from uh, from Mrs. Sure. And uh, to add on to this fact, right, the, the Shur family, they've had a great year uh, down the pipeline. Uh, Phil obviously winning a Yeshiva League Championship, his brother his brother Ray winning an eighth grade one for Mag and David, and then um, Harold, uh, their father, uh, um, coached Stephen Schur, uh to a fifth grade league championship for Mag and David. So. Wow. You, got, you got the whole family filed out. Oh, yeah. Who else but Marv <laughs> Actually, my cousin, so I have to. Oh, that works also. <laughs> Bitron fouled on the three there. You saw that as soon as he went up. You saw that it connected with his with his hand and also pushed him back there. Again, Bitron's not the not the biggest guy in stature, but very strong guy. So if he got pushed back like that, you know that that was a foul. He's gonna go to the line now for three free throws. Very good shooter. You know, he's been a, he's been a staple of this team the past couple years. He drills the first free throw. We would like to thank Chopsticks for being a proud Max Life sponsor. For the best Chinese food in Teaneck, you've got to go to Chopsticks. Head to ChopsticksUSA.com to order online. The link is in the description of this video. Marv, have you ever been to Chopsticks? Oh, I don't think so. But I've had their food before. I'll tell you, Chopsticks we have very, very often. Absolutely fantastic food. You know, the... You got you got to get the. Uh, a lot of people don't know the chicken egg rolls are oh. very underrated. A lot of people know about the beef egg, egg rolls, the vegetable egg rolls. Yeah. The chicken egg rolls are fantastic. They take the cake for me. Oh, as do. as Weinstock looks to get a chicken egg roll there on the inside, yeah. but he missed it. Here it is. Jacobson, sorry, Mendelssohn misses the shot. As Jacobson has put a lot of that frame into Schwartz, and he knocks him down. Again, like we said, not someone who's easy to knock down, but Schwartz has taken a beating so far this game. Hit the ground a couple times. Here's Weinstock, Weinstock again, playing out on the perimeter. They beat the press there as Kanner misses the shot, the roll didn't go, as Bitron coming down. You could say he needed a little more egg on that one too yeah. to get the roll. Definitely not enough mustard on that one. Nope. Jacobson, the sophomore, pushed out of the paint. Now, good footwork there. But good defense at the rim by Weinstock and Kanner. But Weinstock got hit in the midsection there as he's coming up grimacing. Kanner a little too high for him. He comes down with it, throws it back out. Kilberg, Beeka words to the play. And here's Mendelssohn, a, sc a scrum at the bottom. And now a pile forms, they're gonna call a jump ball. It's gonna be possession going the other way to Shalhevit. Always with these jump balls, it's a matter of who wants it more. Yeah, and also jump ball means a lot more in Yeshiva League and also in college because that's a, there's automatic possession, you don't jump for it. So, 
You really w were rewarding hustle a lot more. That's the way it should be, hustle and heart. Hustle and heart. Mendelssohn to Kilberg. Sorry, Betron to Kilberg. As he misses the three. Now here comes Schwartz. Kilberg pressing up on him. Schwartz inside. Fade away. Misses it. Rebound now by Jacobson. Um, gotta look for Jacobson. You know, um, look for Jacobson to sort of erupt here. Uh, or sort of push the pace a little bit more. He's, he's trying to do something great for his dad. His dad, Joel, was a top 10 uh, YU scorer of all time. And before this weekend, he had never been back to this to the heights since his last game. So here he is back, and son is trying to make him proud with, uh, with this possibly being the final game in, in this gym for him. What a, what a story for him, as they're going to call an offensive foul there by Mendelssohn on the screen. The inbound now. Here comes Gortz. Gortz, you know, Coach Gelb calls him his coach on the court. Very, very smart player. Plays under control. He's definitely going to miss him next year when, uh, when, um, when he graduates. Big part of the 25-game win streak that this Maimonides team had. You know, they, they started the game as Schwartz hits the fadeaway. They started the, they started the season losing to TABC in Memphis. They, um, they then won 25 straight before losing to... Um, before losing the, to the, to the um, future state championship winner in the playoffs. So this team has had an incredible season. They came into Sarachek very hot, and uh, they really made their mark. Here's Wintner. Lieberman, he had that shot. So if I'm him, I, I'm looking for him to take that. Kilberg on the baseline into the double. Throws it to Mendelssohn. Wintner to Mendelssohn. And they're passing up a lot of good shots. I don't know if they're going to get shots like that again, and they don't as Mendelssohn falls to the floor, begging for a foul. Gewurz, he had Lieberman on his hip, but he didn't get it. Kilberg back to Mendelssohn, and Mel Mendelssohn, you know, he made, for up, made up for the previous play with the shot inside. Gewurz breaks the press. You know, nice heady play there by Gewurz, using his arm to try to, try to fend off Butron. Again, that's not something the refs are gonna call, so if it works, it works. Banks now checked into the game. Good again. Here it is, Kilberg fighting defensively. Kanner throws it out. The ball's taken now by Mendelssohn. Good defensive pre pressure up there against Nadav Sprung. Bitron spots out for the three. Missed it, rebound Lieberman, he put it straight up. As you see now, Wintner fighting for the ball with Kanner as Kanner's gonna step out and it's gonna remain with Shaw Heather. 2.41 left on the clock. Sarachek has arrived. Max Live is your home for the tournament. Watch games, news, stats, and more at maxlive.com. Again, maxlive, M-A-C-S-L-I-V-E.com, maxlive.com. Your home for the Red Sarachek tournament. Again, before we go to commercial, we'd like to announce again, as there are many, as there are a few things in this world that are bigger than basketball, we need to ask a special favor of everyone watching this game. Go to the description of this YouTube video and click on the OU link. Complete the form and send a letter to President Biden. We need to put pressure on the White House to intervene in the, ho intervene in the hostage situation. The OU is starting a campaign to deliver 180,000 signed letters to the White House on Wednesday next week. Click the link in the description of this video and fill out the form. Thank you. Again, you know, as much as, as, much as uh, we owe it to these guys to make sure that they have the, the Sarachek tournament that they dreamed of, we, we, can't, we can't be forgetting. Again, I could speak for myself in Libby, but I think also for us, Libenu Ba Mizrach. We con we're constantly thinking about, about, the, about the hostages and those who, um, who are we're not able to be with their families at this time. And it's very important to do what we could. Again, we're not, we're not fighting on the, on the front lines exactly. But we have a different role. We have to make sure that, that our, our, our officials, both local and, uh, and federal, can, can hear from us and hear that it is not okay what is going on in the world. And um, they, they need to hear and, 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 and make sure that, that our voices are strong and that we're not going to be silent. Yeah. I think uh, what happened on October 7th, I think, affected everyone in, in some way, shape, or form. And I think as a, as a nation, it's on us to, to come together. And this tournament does a great job 
uh, of doing it. That's true. Again, the, the connections made from kids. You know, you have a kid from uh, from from uh, from Chicago who never necessarily meet a kid from uh, from Texas playing for Yavna, but um, you have these these connections and you have these these lifelong friends that are made. Exactly. That's what made this 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 uh, that's what made the Shabbat so 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 special for all these kids being in uh, being in one building, getting to to know each other. Uh, off the court and maybe even pick each other's brains a little bit about the game. Uh -huh. And now they have to tear each other up on the court, which they're, of course they're doing very well. Now score 21-27. Mimo's keeping it close as you have two minutes left now. It's a similar script. It's a similar script to what we saw on Friday against Maggie and David in their tier one quarter, in their tier one quarter final. They just weren't able to get over that hump. Do they have what it takes to get over that hump here today? Yeah, but I, of course, it has to be mentioned a little bit, a little bit of a smaller hump to get over than the 20-point lead that they were operating against Magan. That one helped their case there with the foul. Now you have checking into the game just now with Gideon Gordon. Some nice alliteration for him there. As Aton Ackerman also and Wintner, and then also Jason Ascari. Again, Lieberman staying on the court as he does when a lot of these uh, players come off the bench, keeping a steady hand for them as the pass hit Banks and rattled back now to Greenberg. Banks goes out of bounds, going the other way. Again, I think I think they just wanted to, to, to let it out, but uh, Banks, Banks must have thought that it went off, so he tried to save it. Again, didn't work out there. It's Ackerman sporting the cool blue shoes. Nice. Uh, for those keeping track of the shoes at home. And now it's going back the other way. Okay, so Coach Geld, Wintner. No, Wintner, big player. He's just growing more and more into his frame. And I look forward to next year seeing them at seeing them at, uh, at Saracek, seeing what this kid could do on the court. Wintner throws it back out. Here's Ackerman, the three. Bang! Bang! There it is. You read my mind, Marvin. Oh, yeah. Ackerman, the action, man. He's in it. Weinstock throws it inside. Greenberg fouled in one. Stay with your chest. Yep, that's gonna make Ari Greenberg, the assistant captain for uh, Royal Ice Hockey, extremely happy. A familial connection there. Oh yeah, brothers. Brothers. Very nice. Good to hear. Six, uh, six foot freshman. Got a nice frame there. He misses the free throw. Coming now by Ackerman. A minute left. Again, we remind you to stay tuned for the Camp Step It Up post-game show. Um, again, we're looking... We're, sorry, sorry, I apologize. The Yachad post-game show. Again, looking forward to that. Of course, we love Camp Step It Up, but Yachad also, fantastic organization. I was privileged to go uh, on Yad Biyad this summer. Really, really meaningful experience for me. Um, Yachad is definitely a great, a great place and they do some great things. Bitron now check back into the game as they're gonna call a timeout and we're gonna send you to commercial break. Thousands worldwide choose Israel for their gap year. Massah has opportunities for interning, studying, volunteering, and exploring throughout the country. Doing an internship on gap year, I learned all these skills that no kid who hasn't gone to uni is supposed to know yet. My experience at Massah learning about Judaism and Israel is going to help me take those values into my future, into college, and then bring them into the rest of my life. Now, more than ever, this is your time to explore Israel, explore who you are on your Massah gap Gap year. All right, back in. We would like to thank Dougie's for being a proud Max Live sponsor. For the best barbecue and grill and teaneck, make your way to Dougie's. Go to Dougie'sBBQ.com. Again, Dougie'sBBQ.com to order. The link is in the description in the video. Again, uh, absolute certified yeshiva classic are those fire poppers as Bichon got some fire poppers of his own popping the three as he pokes it out. He wanted to say it went off the hands of Spira, but it's gonna stay now with Maimonides. Again, Spira had a, had a big role on the, the Maimonides team. Um, again, I'm not following their, their season as so closely. You see he has a knee brace. I'm wondering if maybe it was an injury that, that uh, in inhibited some of his play this season. As now Masagi checked into the game. I could confirm that there was. He did, he did have to battle through it, but he's, he's back. As Weinstock hooks it in, and now he cuts it to an eight point lead. 30 seconds left again. Bambi Tron, I'm holding this down. Mm. Trying to get a high percentage shot. 
No reason to rush anything, actually. I was going to say that if you're a wine stock, that's what you got to do. Just stockpile those paint opportunities. Ascari over here to Bitron. Bitron, 10 seconds left. Looking to create some magic as he normally does. Bitron inside, fouled, and one. Give me the hot sauce. Bitron starting to heat up now. Again, he hit that three. And now he's looking to do the old-fashioned three-point play. Again, five seconds on the clock. And back to a double-digit lead. But if you're Maimo, you want to bring this one right back down with a last second shot. It's a pretty great end, pretty pretty fire end to this quarter for Shahana. As he drains it as he normally does. Now they're going to call a substitution. Kilberg coming inside for Bitron. They don't want him to pick up a foul, I'd imagine. This is part of the motivation. Here's Banks to Schwartz. Schwartz with three seconds into Weinstock, the deep three. Oh, and it hit the sixth man. The infamous YU um, frame. And now we're going to send you to the commercial break. Stay tuned for the fourth quarter. Thousands worldwide choose Israel for their gap year. Massah has opportunities for interning, studying, volunteering, and exploring throughout the country. Doing an internship on gap year, I learned all these skills that no kid who hasn't gone to uni is supposed to know yet. My experience at Massah learning about Judaism and Israel is going to help me take those values into my future, into college, and then bring them into the rest of my life. Now, more than ever, this is your time to explore Israel, explore who you are on your Massah gap We would like to thank all of our sponsors. If you would like to become a Max Live sponsor, email us at yumaxlive at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram or Twitter. Again, DM Ma uh, Marv. Is that what the cool kids are doing nowadays? I'm not, I'm not holding. It's DM. Yeah. It's DM. Digital message? Direct yes. message? It's, uh, I believe it's direct message. All right. Amazing. So again, make sure to, to let Max Live know if you want to be a sponsor. Here's Greenberg, double team by Bitron. Splits the double, falls to the floor. Schwartz comes up for it. What a great pass. And for Greenberg with a hockey background, that's, that's, he, sh he showed it right there, keeping his head up. Schwartz looking for another three, misses, got his own rebound. Inside! Good shot there by Avi Schwartz. You know, Greenberg has had a little bit of a quiet game. Hasn't really played like himself. You have these very tough perimeter defenders. But Schwartz has done a great job, again, following his shot. We've seen him do that a couple times. We know when you shoot, especially if you hit the front rim, very possible that you, you don't really have your legs after playing so many games in so many days. Again, as he front rims it again, so um, definitely make sure to follow your shot. Here's Dweck, back to Beatron. Nine-point lead now after that play. Gowertz to Weinstock. He's got size and he's got numbers. And he puts in another and one for the Maimonides MCATs. Oh, they're coming. I mean, they, 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 sort of, they, they saw how at the end of that third quarter, you know, shall have it. They set the, they set the MCAT litter, litter box ablaze. And now these guys have come out in the fourth. The vengeance. Fire in their own game. You know, I, someone, someone pointed it out to me as Weinstock drills the second free throw. I don't know if it was intentional, but the MCATS is the name of the medical exam, and the Rambam, also known as Maimonides, was a doctor. So I don't know if that one was on purpose, but um, definitely very interesting. Lieberman thought about the three, looked up and saw he was too far. Here's Dweck. Dweck brings it back. Finds Lieberman. Lieberman surveys inside, looking for someone. Wintner resets. Lieberman to Dweck. Dweck pulls up. Did not like that shot for him there, but luckily they get a break as Kander's not able to corral the rebound. You know, if you're if you're Dweck, you don't wanna you don't wanna get it off the off the drive like that. It's not, it's not a shot he's nor, he's normally uh, used to taking. But it looks like they got a they got a break, so they can reset. They're gonna throw it back out now. As here's Lieberman. Lieberman puts it inside, but he got a little stutter step there. Again, he had to play, but 
he got a little happy feet. He got excited when he saw that uh, that Canner was so open inside. Sorry, not Canner. That when he saw that um, that Whitner was so open inside, so he uh, he happy feeted his way to a travel. A little overthinking there from the from the Firehawks, and we'll see we'll, we'll see if the if Maimonides has an answer. Maimonides been surging back so far this quarter, but Gewurz misses the three. Looked like it was online. Lieberman looking for an answer. So far, Shaw Heaven has not scored this quarter. Maimo has scored already five points. And and one plays. Plays that will get the crowd involved. Here's Ascari. Inside, Whitner. Easy shot for him there. He cannot give the big man that type of shot. He got Weinstock over on the fake. There's just no excuse to let up that shot with the big man that you have and the size of my mind is Tanner, tough shot inside. And Lieberman now comes down with it, 38-30. You know, Bitron, you know, now, now looking to try to bring back the lead to double digits. Try to secure this game, help them move on to the fifth place game to face Ida Crown. As Ascari rips away the play from Kanner. Bitron inside, misses the layup, and it's tipped to Kanner now. Kanner is able to corral it. Here's Greenberg to Gewurz. Gewurz playing in one of his last games. Gewurz to Weinstock. Weinstock inside, fouled there by Wintner, and he's going to go back to the line. Fantastic free throw shooter. Again, we want to remind people to tune in to the next game. Um, the next game we're playing, you know who's playing next, Marv? The next game will be... I believe it is, it is, uh, yeah, right here, got it, it is, it is, you, it is, uh, it is, Kushner, Kushner. It is, Kushner. It yeah. is uh, yep, right here, it is at a tier three semifinal between the Kushner Cobras and the Cooper Max. Cooper looked good in their last game against, uh, against MTA. Looks to see, again, there hasn't been, uh, there hasn't been many teams this season that Kushner's been able to, to, to come out victorious. No, so let's see what Cooper can do. Kushner has some hockey reinforcement reinforcements that they brought onto their squad, though it didn't mean much against DRS. Or also, aside from being a quality basketball school, is also a pretty good hockey school themselves, having won the varsity uh, chip this year. And then you have Cooper. Yeah, they looked good against against MTA, but they blew a double-digit lead. They weren't able to close it out. you got to be able to do that in playoff games. Whitner misses the shot. As Schwartz throws it behind his back. Nifty play there by Schwartz, but he wasn't able to find any of the players. Masagi now back on the court for Maimonides, as well as Banks. As you see, the five for Shall Have It as Ascari, Lieberman, Wintner, Mendelssohn, and Kilberg as Bitron took a seat. That'll probably be the final rest for him before the home stretch here in the fourth. Interested to see what play they'll do here on the inbound. Do they go for a quick basket, or do they maybe sort of make yeah, them work here? I need a basket here if I'm shall have it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to do anything that that'll. Again, that's definitely not what you want to do. But but you just find an open look and you take it. No, you're not holding I, the ball at this point. Yeah, again. but they they rushed it right there. They sort of rushed it. There's Schwartz right misses the three. Here comes Kilberg. Gilbert coming on the other end. I mean, that was a great press by, by my mom, but wouldn't I mind if I also have it slowing things down here. Just letting the game come to you. You're up six. Not yeah. a great question, but you have some time on your side. You also have something to look at. Lieberman, Ascari, and Wintner are probably going to be starters next year for this team. Um, so coach wants to see how they play in the clutch. But, uh, of course, you got to keep Mendelssohn and Kilberg. got to keep two seniors on there. Again, a couple minutes left, but we just want to make sure to thank our crew, um, executive producer, um, executive producer Eitan Traurig, executive, I'm sorry, executive director, executive producer Zevi Panser, um, technical director Duvid Raviv, as the shot is missed there, Bitron takes it out. Associate producer Yosef Silver, director Jared Lazarus, assistant director Mo uh, Moshe, um, Moshe Rechster, um, camera operator Ziggy Garb, 
Tova Farber, um, Rachel Linzer, Kermet Harari, um, Hannah Cooper, and T Tech Ops, Hannah Coopersmith, and Stats, Gila Marcus, and Sammy Levitt. Again, we want to thank you as they're going to call an offensive foul there on Kilberg. Again, thank the crew, um, especially some of our uh, executive directors and producers for everything they do to make this weekend possible. We know uh, not going to not going to single anyone out, but they've had uh, definitely more than a few sleepless nights, including some of the crew pulling an all-nighter last night. Um, again, very impressive with everything they do with the YU season, the Saracic season, and we thank them for everything. We also thank them for the opportunity to come out in and call these games. It's definitely something we don't take for granted. Uh, yeah, I'm on the I'm on the side of a, of a of a, I'm in that boat of being of it being tough to get sleep these last few nights. A lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that make these great broad broadcasts po possible. And thank you for everything that you guys do to make sure that I can get a nice relaxing sleep last night. <laughs> no problem. Bitron now four point lead. Mimo again creeping back. Only two points so far this quarter from Chalhevet versus uh, Mimo putting up nine. Yeah, the unfortunate part is that this is uh, over the last 24 hours in terms of tournament games, this has been a common trend. Oh, are we sending it to commercial? Uh, are we keeping it live or are we sending it to commercial? Um, we, right. Whatever we see. All right, anyways, uh, they can, uh, I guess we're sending it live. All right, thanks. We'll talk until we get shut we'll out. We'll talk until we get shut out. But as, uh, what, I, what I was trying to say here is that over the last 24 hours, uh, this has been a this has been a common trend. Uh, in last night's Fuchs Ramaz game, uh, in, that, in that tier two uh, quarterfinal, Fuchs scored five points in the fourth quarter. They managed to win as Ramaz weren't weren't able to. They managed to win 60 to 59. They were 55 44 entering the fourth. Hey, Ramaz couldn't uh, they couldn't capitalize on their opportunities to win the game. Well, that that you don't that that's lucky. You don't get you don't get most of the time. You're not going to win those types of games. And Berman proved that. Um, at, after midnight last night, they only scored eight points in the fourth. Got run out of the building in the fourth, 20 to eight by DRS, and, uh, uh, and as a result, they weren't able to uh, advance. You know, props to them though for being able to move uh, after midnight on a uh, on Motsu Shabbos. You know, they definitely they definitely had to be eating differently than I was on Shabbos. That's definitely for sure. Again, a reminder to stay tuned. Um, that right after the game ends, we're going to have the Yachad post-game show where we are going to be interviewing some of the stars of the game. Make sure to stay tuned. Um, there's definitely some stars playing in this game. As Mendelssohn back, throw a lot of the starters back in the game now for both teams. Here's Lieberman to Bitron. Comes off the screen, the three. But they're going to call a foul. It's going to stay here. There's going to be a defensive foul. You know, the ref was letting the, the drama build there as he, was, uh, he called a foul. But then he waited for everyone to, to, to look at him before he's, he said which direction it was going in. Ref now having a stern talking to with a Gewurz and Bitron. As well yeah. as Coach Gelb. Maybe something going on that we don't know about. Probably just talking about how the Shabbos was. <laughs> Ask him about any, anything good see anyone go to the in-laws here's Kilberg Weinstock guarding him out on the on the uh, perimeter now attack the rim exactly exactly what shall have it did you know when <laughs> when you have your 6-5 center guarding out on the perimeter um, you definitely want to be attacking the rim Bitron gonna be inbounding again make sure to watch the inbounder Coaches have always told me that is the most dangerous player because you cannot set up against him defensively. Here's Banks, throws it to Weinstock. Weinstock inside, misses the shot. And now the shot is spread back out, and here comes Schwartz. Oh, you got, an, got an injury. Yep. Ooh. I think what, he got hit in the face? It looks like it, yes. Yeah. And no Hollywood acting there as Lieberman got, right. got whacked. He's a, he's a tough kid. Yep. He's, he is, as uh, as my software would say, he is one tough cookie. Uh, uh, something I've realized with these Cali kids over watching these guys, these, these, these teams throughout the tournament, they're as tough as nails. Just just look at uh, look at people's knees. Look how scuffed up people's knees are for landing directly on them, but they do not care. They'll dive back down the next play. Canner back in the game. Double teams. 
And now they press back off of him. Kanner again, it seems like they're double teeing him every time he's in that corner. Here's Greenberg. Greenberg inside, throws it to Weinstock, to Gortz. Gortz thought about the three. Pass it cross court. Schwartz, deep three. Missed it. Rebound by Kanner as he took it right off the top of Ackerman. Schwartz throws it into Weinstock, and Weinstock misses the shot. He had a chance there to cut it to a one possession game. That's, that's that blocker. That was great help defense down low by the Firehawks to get that crucial stop. Yeah, and a minute 56 now on the clock as Yavshal have it nursing a four point lead that just seems to get cut away every couple minutes. But Bitron's looking to change that. Kaboom! Bitron puts it in. Got the nice Kawhi Leonard roll. Weinstock puts it in. Oof. Almost, it rolled out. But almost a three point play there. That would have made this game a lot more interesting. It's still time for them as he's going to try to cut it to a five point lead. You know, I understand in that last possession, they were trying to, Naimo was trying to find the, the open, open man down low. What I maybe would have done in that situation is maybe go at the rim if you're from the charity stripe. You know, B Bitron, right. the past couple games um, in, in Sarachuk, he's, he's played very well in terms of his uh, point production, but not as efficient as, uh, as you would think uh, with a player like him, just he really has had to carry the offensive load. You know, shot six for 24 and and uh, six for 18. So, but um, he's played, I think, a little bit, a little bit more, more sound, a little bit more selective with his shots. Um, again, still has 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 taken a lot of shots this game, but I think they've been they've been smarter shots, even if some of them have haven't gone in. As that's Weinstock hits the second. Yeah, to add to your point, that's what we want to see. Uh, even if you're not hitting them, the fact that you're thinking the game better, uh, that's in the long run, that's going to help you and your team as well. Yeah. And we talked about it. it's crazy to think about this might be one of the last times some of these guys play basketball um, with uh, you know with like wearing a jersey like with playing playing a uh, high level basketball for a lot of these guys this is it so uh, that's why you see some of them playing so hard you know, trying to get out those uh, these, their competitive fire that they might not tap into for a while at least not on the basketball court as Kilberg is fouled there by Banks Banks with aggressive defense you know you wonder if that was on if that was on purpose. Um, Given, given the time that's left in the game. As Coach Gelb, yeah, and still holding on to the possibility of being able to come back. Again, only a five point lead. So it looks like he's gonna sub in Gewertz and Kanner and Greenberg. And then on the uh, other end of the court, you see got Cooper and Kushner in the doorway, waiting to get their opportunity to play on this iconic court. Yeah, that's, that's, that's another thing that, you know, you see these guys playing you know, it, 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 no matter where you come from, it means something to, to win a game on these court. When you see the, the Ryan Terrell picture staring at you um, from, from down the court and you see the NCAA tournament appearances and the Skyline Championships staring you down from the other end. So, um... And we go the other way. Here it is. They tried to get the outline pass, but a timeout is called. We're going to send the commercials now. Thousands worldwide choose Israel for their gap year. Massah has opportunities for interning, studying, volunteering, and exploring throughout the country. Doing an internship on gap year, I learned all these skills that no kid who hasn't gone to uni is supposed to know yet. My experience at Massah learning about Judaism and Israel is going to help me take those values into my future, into college, and then bring them into the rest of my life. Now, more than ever, this is your time to explore Israel, explore who you are on your Massah gap year. Now, look at the fouls for each team. 
I, I'd, I'd imagine that um, I'd imagine that there would be free throws now, unless they're saying no, it's going to be a side out. Yes, yeah, so it seems like it's it's five fouls for each team as of now. So not not in the bonus yet. As Kane is going to check now into the game for Maimonides. Like you have most of the bench in the game. You have Kane, Schwartz, Banks. You also have for that um for their team. You also have um, number 22. Um, Nadav Sprung, as well as Yohonathan Ruderman. So again, these teams really relying on the bench. It looks like Shalhevitz going to take take the win and advance to the, um, to the fifth place game. Unless we can see some magic here as Schwartz releases the three. Oh, yeah! Forget all that. Shalhevitz, take back your, uh, your your advancement. Looks like uh, Maimani's got something to say about it as now there's a seven-point lead. Now with 47. Sorry, yeah, six point lead. 47 seconds to go. With, so, so I'm, if you're if you're my mode, you don't want to you don't want to intentionally foul just yet. I think you, it's two possession game. Sort of, so you want to be a little bit more careful here. If you're shall have it, I don't think you're gonna rush. We've saw that we've seen them make uh, crucial mistakes earlier, a few minutes ago, and rush it, and rushing some possessions and. Coleman's talked about that being uh, something that they've uh, struggled with, just settling things down. And we'll see here if these boys are able to not be so intimidated by the moment. Not let this, not let this overwhelm them here. You have a six-point lead with you know, under a minute. You got your time right now is your best friend. You you want to take your chance. You'll get your opportunity if you're patient. That's what, the, uh, and in these final moments, it's as much as it is about physically completing and physically doing the action, also mentally too. You have to be mentally strong and mentally sound. As the foul now there, as Ascari. Yeah, he you, you don't want line. that. That's not. What, that's not. What, that's not what the MCATs wanted there. You could see the reaction of Aaron Banks. Just they were pressing, trying to force. Force the issue, and instead there's a foul, and it's gonna put put Shalhevit at the line to make this a three-possession game, and that's good. Again, a, a reminder to a reminder to go to the the Yachad post-game show is coming up. Make sure not to go anywhere. We're gonna have an interview with the stars of the game. This is. Nishin Skari trying to stretch his lead to eight. As nope. he misses it, now only a seven point lead still. And you can cut into that with a three as Schwartz uncorks one, almost went in. Schwartz was looking to have this building on its feet. But see, is that is that a shot you want to take if you're if you're him? I mean, yeah, you have confidence, let it rip. Well, it depends. When you say him, are you talking about Schwartz, or are you saying if you're him? Because Avi nah. Schwartz plays like him sometimes. He does. He does. But if you're Schwartz, is that do, do you? That's that's sort of a shot that maybe you could step into a little bit more than just rushing it. And I just talked about. Don't know about that one. They're gonna call a foul. Where they say they wanted it just to be a side out. But as I was saying there, see, those are the things where. Sometimes the moment, the moment gets to your head, right? You think you have, you think you have less time than you actually have. And what makes these players great is how is how they're able to stay calm and cool under pressure. It's such a, it's a cliche, but it's not easy to 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 practice. And you don't do that. And in practice, it doesn't. And you don't. You can't practice this. And, scrimmages. It only comes from you actually experiencing it in game-like situations like these. So one of two from the line. Now the Firehawks lead by eight. Miami's, now this is where you go quick. Here it is. Weinstock inside. Weinstock puts it in. And that's a small possession. Yeah. Now it has a timeout. Now you can reset things a little bit. Six-point game. Now in a timeout, you gotta say a okay. Yeah, 
Don't want to. Okay, next next game. Make sure to stay tuned. Uh, you got uh, you got Marvin I on the call uh, again. Apparently, we just got official word that we're doing the co that we're doing the next one. Yeah, they they like us so much okay. they want to keep us on. We'll, we'll take it. Any who, chance who we could get. blame them? Nope. I don't. We'll we'll be learning about these players on the call oh. just as much <laughs> as you guys are. Oh, <laughs> uh, the uh, best part about having watching a tier three game is. Uh, being having is uh, having had the opportunity to early see Cooper in person yesterday on Friday in their game against MTA, so glad I was able to have that chance. I cannot say the same, so uh, uh. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be learning the guys. And then so good, it's just just like these players, it's like a pickup game. You know, it's like a pickup game for us. Exactly. You know, just like announcing in the park. You don't know who the people are. Nope. Travel there by. Oh, oh my goodness. What are we witnessing? Shall have it travel there. Only one second come off the clock. Now all the starters coming on. Coach Gelb starting to see something in this at the end of this game. Canner throws it to Gewertz. Gewertz back to Schwartz. Trying to get a three. No. Misses it. Oh, and no. you're anything but a rebound. No. As that removes the opportunity for you to get an offensive rebound. He rushed it again. I love him, but he rushed it again. You got to keep that follow through. You, you got to keep that follow through, and you got to also... Take a take a split second. They, you don't you're, you you got a couple seconds that you think yeah. Ooh, and there's gonna call a jump. They're gonna call a foul. I don't know where the foul came from because Canner wasn't even on the ball. He kind of just dove to the ground. But if anything, you would think that that would be a jump ball. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. By the way, Marv. Yes. Can we just talk about? how we have been gifted absolutely fantastic semifinal matchups later in the Tier 1 uh, uh, tournament. Oh, oh yes. Megan, you're, well, the first thing I'll say um, is that there's two Syrian schools, so you're going to have a Syrian invasion. Uh, oh, love them. This, this place will be rocking. Yeah, Megan and TABC, two, and then uh, Flatbush and Eula, and if you've seen those two fan bases, uh, they bring it. They bring the noise. And they bring the crowd. Uh, this I'll gym is going to be. This is gonna, this gym will absolutely be popping. I'll, I'll tell you when I when I'm announcing the first games. <coughs> a lot a lot of times when you have flash. Yeah, the final score. Sorry, 48, 51. 48, 41. 41. Shall have oh, it. Firehawks get yeah. it. So ultimately, they're the ones who who are able to take this one in advance to the fifth place game. We back though with. Post game interviews and the post game show. Yeah, We've come a long way, haven't we? chalk it up to maturity over time. Because this time, we will not be silent. This time, we will stand strong and proud. This time, we will hold our ground. This time. They'll never stop me from being me. Clipped. Show who you are. And we're back here at the Maxstone Athletic Center where the Shalhibit Firehawks have just defeated the uh, my Monomies MCATs 48 to 41. Uh, my Monomies put up a fight despite trailing for most of the contest, but ultimately the Chalhevet uh, got it done and advanced and advances to the fifth place game. And, uh, with that, we are now. With that, not yet. All right. Uh, just uh, so it was, uh, down the stretch, it was execution. It was execution mattered for both for both teams. It was a much of a mental game as it was them physically executing it. And ultimately, uh, Shalhevet is able to come away 
uh, with a nice hard-earned victory. These players should be proud coming out here at 9.30 on a Sunday morning and putting on a great show for all of us great uh, Sarachek basketball fans here. We're going to now send it down to Ari Katz with the stars of the game. To the Yachad post-game show, I'm here with some of the stars of the game. Yeah, and Ben Wintner and also uh, Jacob Kilberg. No, you guys played a fantastic game. Ben getting a lot of shots inside, played fantastic defense. Uh, what was your takeaway from this game? This guy's a beast and he's going to dominate next year. That's all oh, I yeah. know. This guy's oh, a bucket. Yeah. This guy's a beast. You know, uh, you know one, of, uh, Jacob's, one of Jacob's last games, he had to come show for the fans. You know, uh, there's one guy in particular, Ben Shamer, got home watching. You know, he's, he's just our boy. He gives us motivation. He's like he's centerpiece the of the team. The reason I'm here. You know, we got We all have those have those people back at home. You know that make sure that make us play hard. Uh, so uh, we make sure to we make sure to play hard for them. You guys played fantastic. Look forward to seeing you next year. Had a great year, great career, guys. Look forward to seeing you in the next game. All right, for Max Live, I'm Ari Katz.